Hi guys, thanks for clicking on the video. Now I often get asked, how did I first get into scooters? How did I first get into two-wheel transport in general, uh, apart from a push bike which I had when I was a child? So I thought I'd do a brief series of videos, slightly different from what I normally do, just discussing all the bikes I've had over the last of what is almost 20 years. Now there's been some successes, there's been some failures, there's been some disasters, there's been some triumphs. So there's a, there's a range of scooters coming over the next uh, short time you'll see in these brief videos. Uh, but of course we're going to start at the very beginning with my first experience on powered two wheels and my first scooter. So just a bit of context. When I was 21 years old, I was given, as many people are, for a 21st birthday present, driving lessons. And um, I didn't really enjoy driving. In fact, I didn't enjoy driving at all. But as I'd been given the lessons as a present, I was determined to pass, uh, pass the test and, um, and get that license. And I did. It took 40 lessons, and I did. And I kind of got to the point where I finally passed the test and thought, well, thank God that's over. I don't have to do that again. And even to this day, I don't drive a car. I haven't driven a car or a vehicle of any kind with four wheels for, for many, many years. Uh, I, don't, I never felt safe driving. I never enjoyed driving. It just wasn't something for me. So we fast forward now to 2003. And at the time, I am uh, working in Edinburgh, but I'm living in Dunfermline. Now, for those of you not from uh, the UK or Scotland, Dunfermline is a, is a city about 25 miles outside of Edinburgh across the Forth Road Bridge. And in, in those days, there was only one Forth Road Bridge. Um, so every day, I, I had to commute in from Dunfermline to Edinburgh. And one of the, the, the problems was the job I had at that time was back shift, um, which meant I started work about half one in the afternoon and I finished work about um, half nine at night. Now, um, as I said, I didn't have a car and frankly, there's nowhere to park for free in central Edinburgh anyway, so nobody would bring a car into Edinburgh for the day uh, even then. Um, the trains were very expensive uh, and not always terribly reliable. So what I did was I got the bus in every day and the bus was great. The bus was service was excellent between uh, Dunfermline and Edinburgh, or at least it was during the day. So getting to work was no problem. However, getting back from work at half nine at night Buses were very few and far between, and I found myself finishing work after a whole day and then standing about at a bus stop for 30, 40 minutes until the bus arrived, and then another sort of 40, 50 minute journey until I got home. So it really was a long day. So I'd always wanted to try and come up with something to, to try and stop this, you know, to try and you know, alleviate all this hanging about. And I remember very clearly, one night I was standing at the bus stop, it was a dark winter's night, early 2003, and uh, waiting for this bus that never showed up. And suddenly, this guy on a scooter went past. And I thought, it just sparked an idea in my head. And I thought, well, you know, that's maybe an alternative to driving. I wonder how you, how you get one of those, how you ride one of those, what you have to do. And that set an idea in motion for me. Um, now, in those days, uh, there was a great magazine out in this country called Twist and Go magazine, which was dedicated entirely to the sort of learn illegal um, scooter market, uh, modern scooters, you know, your traditional scooters, the whole lot, anything up to a 125, basically. Um, the magazine went a few years ago now, a real loss, because there isn't really anything to replace it anymore. There are scootering magazines in Britain, but they're very much to the, the Vespra Lambretta scene and, and the music and the fashion and everything that goes with that. So if you're into sort of modern scooters, it, there's nothing really in it for you. Anyway, so I found Twist and Go magazine at a news agent and thought, well, I'll have a look at this. And I started reading up about scooters. And what amazed me was that that old driving license that I had, you know, dumped in a cupboard 20 years ago, I found actually entitled me to ride a 50cc scooter. Because in those days, if you passed your driving test in the UK, they automatically gave you moped entitlement. They don't do it anymore. It had, I think, 2001 that stopped. But uh, luckily, I, I was uh, good to go. So I actually had full moped entitlement without doing any other kind of tests any other kind of, you know, exam or anything. Now, when I think back now, it was crazy just doing that because obviously you, you would recommend that anyone suddenly deciding to, to jump on a two-wheel motorcycle of any description would do a bit of training or something. But, you know, <laughs> different times and, and I was probably a bit more naive. Anyway, 
So I flipped through Twist and Go magazine for, for a, a month or two, having a think about this. Um, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money buying a bike because I had absolutely no idea if I was going to like it. I'd never been on a motorcycle or a scooter in my life. I hadn't even ridden a push bike since I was a kid. So, you know, I thought, well, if I buy this thing and, and I end up hating it like I hate driving, then it's just going to have to get sold again and it's going to be a waste of, a waste of money. I'm going to lose money on it. So... I had a hunt around and I found a company in England who were an importer and they were called Bees Limited, I think it was, BWS Limited. And they imported Indian 50cc scooters from a company called Baja in India. And one of them was the Baja Spirit 50cc, which was a little two-stroke 50cc scooter, um, basic as anything, drum brakes both ends, nothing fancy about this at all. But it was actually only £750, and that included the delivery from England up to Scotland. So I hummed and hawed a what, and eventually decided, yeah, well, what the hell, let's just try it and see it. 750 quid, you know, I'm not going to lose a lot of money if I don't take to it. <coughs> so sent off my cheque, and, um, and round about, let me just check my dates now, 19th of March, 2003, I was actually at work, my sister was in the house because she'd been staying with me for the weekend. Um, she texted me, or, or phoned me, it would have been in those days probably, to say that this huge crate had arrived and the scooter was here. Now the delivery driver obviously took pity on her because he helped her unpack the crate and he took the crate away. So when I got home that night, this little plastic bodied scooter was sitting out the back door waiting for me. Um, and this was all very exciting. But it was late at night, and as I was off the next day, I thought, well, I'm not going to touch it tonight. So the following day, came down, and first of all, it took me an hour to get it started, because I had no idea how to properly start the thing. I just thought you put the key in the ignition, press the starter button, and away it went. Couldn't get it started at all, so I'm thinking, is there something wrong with it? Um, is it is it faulty? So my sister, actually, while I was outside pressing buttons and things, she phoned the company and spoke to a mechanic who, of course, said, well, you actually have to pull in one of the brake levers. Again, this shows that the sort of naivety of, of me at the time, I didn't know that. I didn't know that's what you had to do. It's a safety thing on all scooters. So as soon as I pulled in the brake lever, pressed the button, of course, it fired up. So that evening, once the, um, once the small supermarket across the road from me had closed for the night, my sister and I wheeled the bike across to the, to the supermarket car park and I got on. And again, I can remember taking off around that car park and thinking, wow, this is completely different from driving. This feels to me much safer. You feel much more in control. And I really enjoyed it. And I thought, fantastic. This is this is a completely different experience. I might just like this. Anyway, the bike came, went back into the store for storage for a couple of days. And then Sunday morning came. And I thought, right, I'm going to have to do my, my daily commute. I'm going to have to see if the bike's able to handle it. I'm going to see how the road is, get used to the, the, the road, um, the, the travelling through. Obviously, I'm going to have to go across the fourth bridge as well, uh, which is, you know, you know, there's winds on the fourth bridge, all kinds of things. See what that's like, just to see if I can do this. So I got up very early on a Sunday morning, when there, obviously the traffic was, was negligible, and took the bike out and did the run from Dunfermline to Edinburgh. Now, you've got to remember, I did that with... <laughs> No real experience on the bike before, apart from around a car park. No tests whatsoever, no instruction, no real idea of what I was doing. Um, but I was younger, probably a, lot, a bit braver or more stupid, one of the two. So anyway, through we went to Edinburgh and I did it. It got through and, and I tell you something, for anyone thinking of taking, getting involved in two wheels and, and trying a bike, the sense of satisfaction I got from that and the feeling I got when I arrived in Edinburgh, parked up in the middle of George Street in Edinburgh and thought, wow, done it. That was amazing. And I can still remember that. It was a great, great feeling. So that was day one and I never really looked back. I had the bike for only two months, but I commuted most days back and forward. And when you think about it, I mean, this thing could barely do 30 miles an hour. It wasn't a fast 50cc by any stretch of the imagination, even though it was a two-stroke. Um, and it was puttering along uh, dual carriageways I was on. Again, I just didn't think, you know, dual carriageways and over, you know, a, a main road bridge, all this sort of stuff. Anyway, even to me, after a couple of months, it, it became obvious the bike was slow. And it also was kind of obvious to me that this, this scootering lark wasn't going to be a passing fad. It was something I was enjoying. It was something I wanted to, you know, do some more of and, and develop from. So I decided to upgrade to a 125 
Uh, and obviously to do that in the UK, as I didn't have a motorcycle license, I had to do my CBT, which is your compulsory basic training day. And I used a little Indian badger spirit to do that. Um, so I took it up. This is, this is about two months after I got it. Took it up to the training school in Dunfermline. And I have to say, it caused a lot of amusement to the guys who were running the training school. One of them commented that there was so much plastic on it, he thought it was an extension of the helmet, which is quite funny. I've always remembered that joke. Um, and they had a lot of fun at my expense, me pottering around on this thing. But hey, I passed the CBT. And that was me all set to buy a 125. So then I had to sell the Badger Spirit 50cc, and I did that by putting it on eBay. Uh, eBay, again, in those days was, was quite a, a basic thing. It wasn't the old singing, old dancing thing it is now. Um, but amazingly, somebody bought it. And the guys actually, a father and son, bought it and brought a van up from Stratford-on-Avon, which is, let me just check my figures here, 200, 250 miles away from Edinburgh. They came up in a van from Stratford-on-Avon to Dunfermline, picked up the Badger Spirit, gave me the money. I can't remember what I sold it for. It was probably 500 quid, something like that. And away they went. And that was it. The bike was away. So that was my first experience of scooting and scootering. And that's what um, kind of got me the bug, got me interested in it. And from that day to this, apart from a couple of breaks, I've never really looked back. And I've always, it's always something I've really enjoyed and been interested in. Now, unfortunately, um, in those days, of course, I didn't have a camera phone um, that... There wasn't anything like that really that I, that I had anyway. Uh, I didn't even have a proper digital camera. So I only have three photographs of the little badger spirit left and they're not very good quality, they're low resolution. But I'm gonna share them with you now because it holds a very soft spot in my heart because this is the bike, naff though it was, and it was naff, uh, this is the bike that got me started on scootering and I've never really looked back since then. Despite some successes, despite some failures, despite some crashes, despite you know other things over the 20 years that have happened, which I'll share with you as we go through the various bikes I've owned in the coming weeks. Anyway, here's the Badger Spirit, all the, all the photos I have, and thanks again for watching, guys. And I tell you, this is why I did this. If, if you're thinking of, of going onto two wheels and you're not quite sure and you're a bit nervous and you don't think you'll like it, Give it a try. It's completely different to driving, um, and it's, a, it's an amazing experience. Uh, and I've never regretted it. And it, it's been one of the great, you know, enjoyments and, and hobbies of, of my sort of later life. So get out there and give it a go. Although my advice would be, please make sure you do some training or something before you go on the bike. Don't do what I did. Even if you have got an old driving license, it's not a good idea. Okay, so here's some pictures of the Badger Spirit. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll be back uh, in a short space of time with the second bike that I owned and my first 125. So stay tuned for that. All the best now. Take care.